Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the second CBI webinar about edible nuts. And today we are going to be talking about the export opportunities for macadamia nuts to the EU. We will soon start the session. Let's do a couple of introductions and, uh, well, just one introduction actually to start and uh, some housekeeping. My name is Tonya Dabu and welcome to those of you that were present last week for the webinar or just over a week ago. Um, my name is Tonya Dabwe and I am your moderator and host today. Um, I run my own online consulting company working with uh, African, mainly African um, and European businesses. And my focus area is uh, funding, marketing and sales, uh, business growth and business management. My main role today is just to make sure that everything goes smoothly, that you get the maximum information possible from us today, and that we get to answer all of your questions. So get ready, and uh, any questions that you have, fire away. Before you start firing away with your questions, I'm just going to explain a couple of things about the program that we're using today, which as you know, is GoToWebinar. Some of you may be familiar with that already. Um, first of all, we cannot hear you and we cannot see you. Um, what that means particularly, in just one second while I verify one thing. Okay, this is okay. We cannot hear you and we cannot see you, but uh, you can hear us and you can see us, at least we hope you can. Um, if you have any technical issues, for example, audio problems, which I realize is a bit tricky because if you're having audio problems, you can't actually hear me. But if you are having audio problems with the webinar, please just uh, go to audio in your um, um, control box, which if you're on a laptop is at the right of your screen. Go to audio, switch to no audio, and then back to uh, computer audio or whichever audio uh, tool instrument that you are using. If you keep having problems with the webinar, the best thing you can do is log out, leave the webinar, and then use the invitation link to log back in. That usually solves the problem. Um, let's see. If uh, you have a question, please use the end the question session, the question box. I'm sorry. Please use the question box at the right of your screen to ask us a question. We are present and waiting for your questions. We have a team at the back end that's also waiting to answer your questions. Technical questions will be answered via chat and uh, questions that you have about the presentations that we are giving today will be answered during the Q&A sessions, um, unless it's a question that is very particular to uh, one individual that we might also answer during the chat. Please do feel free to ask as many questions and all the questions that you have. We will do our best to answer all of the questions. Uh, we have two Q&A sessions, one uh, in halfway through the webinar and one at the end of the webinar, and we will do our best to answer, um, if not all, at least definitely the most important questions. We will also be running a couple of polls uh, to find out some more about you and also to check whether everything is working correctly. Please note that um, we are recording the session. So if you do lose connection or if you drop out during the webinar, it's not a problem. We're going to be sending you a link with the recording of the webinar so you can view it at your convenience. But obviously we want you to uh, stay online because we think we have some really fantastic information to share with you. And um, well, the webinar that we're that we're going to uh, uh, that we're in at the moment is based on our market study into macadamia and particularly the opportunities that exist on the European market for um, importing macadamia from other countries, developing countries in particular. The market study is available on the CBI website as usual, and uh, my colleague Arto will be sharing information about how to find it on the website at the end of the webinar to so stick around, but we are definitely also going to send it to you at, uh, at the end of the webinar in the email that I mentioned. And the email that you will receive will also contain some information about, uh, well, about the presentations. You're going to receive the slides of the presentations. So you're actually getting, maybe I could call it a goodie bag uh, at the end that contains all the presentations, it contains a link to the market study and a link to the recording of the webinar. 
Um, for those of you who have just joined us, welcome. And we're going to kick off with our very first poll, which I like to do to just check if everything is working correctly. You're going to see the poll on your screens in just a couple of seconds. And I'm going to give you about a minute maximum, I think, to answer the poll and then share the results with you uh, as well. Here we go. Okay, the results are starting to come in. I'm just going to leave it open for a couple more seconds because about 77% of our attendees has voted at the moment. And it's interesting to see that some of you already have experience exporting to Europe. Just a few more seconds. Okay, these are your final seconds to vote. If you haven't voted yet, I am about to close the poll. And this is what we're seeing. Um, the last webinar that we had actually, we had a much larger number of participants who had no experience exporting to Europe about, uh, I think it was about 80% of participants that didn't have experience exporting to Europe. But what we're saying here is that many of you already have been experienced um, exporting edible nuts or other foodstuffs. And that's really interesting to see. And thank you for participating in the poll. Um, before we move to our very first presentation, I would like to tell you that today we're going to be focusing on that the main things that we're going to be focusing on today in the webinar is the market potential, which I think most of you are going to be very interested in. We have a couple of experts today uh, who will be telling you about the key characteristics of that market, the trends that exist on the market, and uh, things that you need to pay attention to when you start exporting to Europe. Um, we will pay particular attention to the legal requirements regarding food export to Europe. As you know, uh, exporting to Europe is very much about the, phyto the, the food and sanitary, uh, uh, phytosanitary conditions and requirements. And those, those are definitely um, one of the points that we're going to be tackling in our webinar today. We'll also be sharing how market demand is developing. Um, tell you about the most important markets, tell you what the best market opportunities are, and we have a couple of, uh, ex we have an exporter and a buyer in our panel today who are also going to be sharing with you uh, the practical aspects of exporting to for the exporter and importing from developing countries by the buyer, things that you need to take into consideration. Um, lastly, we'll have a look at the main competitors. We will share some information about the main competitors that you uh, might expect to encounter on the market. We'll also be telling how they have adapted to the trends. Um, and throughout the entire session, you're going to be getting really practical tips that you can incorporate in your own business and use to, um, well, to, to improve your business activities and your exporting capabilities. I will also be asking our experts questions. So as we start, Please uh, feel free to ask questions throughout the session. Our team is here at the back end and ready to answer all questions. And Arta, can I invite you to join the presentation as we move 
to the next slide. Thank you, um, Tonia. Uh, and good morning, good afternoon, and for some, maybe even good evening. Um, let me start by thanking all of you uh, for joining us today. And I'd like to send out a, a special uh, welcome to the Macadamia processors, uh, the public and private partners from Kenya who joined CBI in our workshops in Nairobi last year. Um, I myself, I had the pleasure of taking part in these workshops and I'm glad to see so many of you are joining us today. And even more so, I'm happy to communicate we will be supporting you in our project that starts in 2021. Um, also, I'd like to mention uh, the experts that collaborate with CBI in our market studies and in our expert coaching programs around the globe. And lastly, I'd like to give a very warm welcome also to all those exporters from other countries in West Africa, in Southern Africa and in Asia. Um, that are joining us today and last but not least many European importers that are joining us. Um, for the people that do not know me, uh, my name is Arthur Scheinert and as a program manager I am responsible for CBI's market research in edible nuts. Um, for listeners that are new to CBI that are perhaps on this call, let me shortly explain to you who we are and what we do. Um, so CBI stands for uh, the promotion of imports from developing countries. We are a Dutch government organization funded by the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And it is our mission uh, to connect small and medium-sized enterprises like yourself to the European market and to create sustainable and inclusive economic growth. And the way we do this is by export promotion as shown on the slide that I have before us right now. So what we do is we help with finding practical solutions to bottlenecks in the export value chain. And one such bottleneck is a lack of good market information. And this brings me to the goal of today's session. Um, so we've been organizing over the past few months a number of sessions on the export potential of various agricultural products we deem as high potential. These include, among others, Phonio, Teff, Cashew last week, and of course today Macadamia. So why do we do this? Um, the main reason is transfer of knowledge. Uh, CBI does a lot of research and we have a big network of importers and many sector experts and consultants working for us that work with us and coach SMEs from Africa and Asia on a daily basis. And uh, with these webinars, we ask them to share their best tips and practical insights with you. Um, so we hope that today's webinar will give you new ideas, inspiration, and that it will help you take steps to improve and prepare your business for your next export success. If you are new to exporting, of those 40% that we saw in the poll, um, and the materials might uh, be a first step towards exporting. But if you're one of those exporters that already is exporting, this webinar and the talks by European importers might give you an extra perspective that can help you focus your business on a certain market or a certain market segment. I wish you all a very good session. Back to you, Tonia. Thank you, Arta. And um, well, we are uh, ready to start getting to know, we're ready to get to know our experts today. And first up is Alexander Jovanovic. Alexander is uh, the manager of Authentica Global, and he is a market research expert joining us from Valjevo in Serbia. Alexander, could I ask you to introduce yourself to our viewers? Uh, hello, Tonya. Hello, Alexander. Your video is still off. Yeah, okay. okay. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, very shortly, I would like to say that uh, I am working for CBI as a market researcher and consultant uh, for the sectors of processed fruit and vegetables, edible nuts, of course, including macadamias and spices and herbs. Uh, aside from CBI work, I also work in many international projects, mainly supporting uh, uh, small and medium exporters from developing countries, uh, uh, supporting them to reach European markets, and also work with many uh, international organizations and export support uh, institutions. So this is very shortly, and I will be presenting most of the uh, information of the Ma uh, Macadamia research study, uh, which we recently updated from the last year. Thank you, Alexander. And um, next up, may I invite Mr. Jens Borchert from uh, Palmets and More Buchholz in Germany. Welcome, Mr. Borchert. Could you tell us a little about yourself? Is 
there you are. Yes. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I know Alexander since a couple of years, and uh, I have visited him in Serbia uh, over another project. So we stay in contact, and he asked me if I would like to join this meeting. Uh, our company is a, originally a brokerage, uh, founded or uh, taken over by a partner and me in 1999. And basically, our main business today is we sell products nut products and dried fruits to the German supermarkets, in particular discounted chains. Um, we are working with macadamias for many years. Uh, uh, today was a group called Green and Gold and Alex White, uh, who is one of the um, sales directors, uh, he's also with us. Um, we are marketing their products just solely in the German market. Uh, we organize roasting, we organize also the packaging, and uh, it's only, only private label we sell. And I'd like to show you a little bit later a brief uh, presentation about the German supermarket business, which is quite difficult, especially for Kenyan origin. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Mr. Borchert. And um, Mr. Bork had already mentioned him. Alex White is joining us today from uh, Johannesburg in South Africa. He's from Grain and Gold Macadamias. And uh, Alex, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Okay, it seems Alex has a couple of problems with his audio and video. Let's see if we can get that sorted in a couple of seconds. Video is on. Alex, your microphone is still off. Sorry about that. Hello, everybody. There you go. Um, sorry about the IT glitch there. Uh, yes, so I, I grew up, uh, my family were actually macadamia farmers in South Africa, and I grew up on a macadamia farm, uh, and they since started a macadamia export uh, business called Green Farms Nut Company back in 1991. Um, after my studies in South Africa, I went overseas to Europe. I lived in Europe for 11 years, and I worked for um, a number of companies in the food space, um, uh, one of them being Barrel and Ballard, which is a nut and dried fruit uh, trader and importer in the UK. Uh, about six years ago, I moved back to South Africa, back to the family business, and um, we, we, along with some other processes, formed uh, Green and Gold Macadamias, which uh, is a marketing uh, mac a macadamia marketing specialist, and we market for a number of processes based across the world. Um, that being Australia, South Africa, Malawi, Kenya, and Brazil. So. Uh, my direct responsibilities is handling sales for those group of processes to the Europe and Middle Eastern markets. Thank you for that introduction, uh, Alex. And um, we are ready to move back. We're ready to get into our market study, our very first market study. But before we do, um, I'd actually like to ask you to participate in another poll. We're starting out our presentation with a presentation about trends. So I'm interested to know in the poll that I'm going to be launching in just a couple of seconds, what do you think are the most important trends that are influencing the European market today? And could you please, as I launch the poll, select the two trends that you feel are the most important? And I will give you a couple of, uh, well, yeah, one or two minutes to fill it out. Here we go. Please choose two trends. Hmm. Okay, I'm slightly surprised by what I'm saying. 70% of our viewers have voted so far, so I am keeping it open just a little longer. 
to see what the rest of you think as well. Sustainability is doing really well. Organic is another one that's scoring very high. Okay, I think most of our viewers have voted. And I am going to close the poll in about five seconds. And share the results with you. Okay, so what we see here is that sustainability and, and uh, organic are considered to be the top two polls, uh, sorry, the top two trends, I should say, on the European market. Um, and actually, I thought veganism was going to score much higher, so I'm slightly surprised by, uh, by the results, but well, I think you're the expert, so you probably know much more about it than I do. And this is where I would like to invite um, Alexander to come online and kick off his presentation. And Alexander, what do you think when you look at this poll? Do you, are you surprised by the results that you see? Um, did you expect this? I'm, uh, I'm very interested to know what you think about it. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm not surprised, and it, uh, it just showed that our uh, Macadamia participants are very well informed, and uh, all those trends are actually very valid. There is no wrong answer. All the trends are interesting. To see uh, one surprise was actually that nobody was clicking on the increasing ice, uh, ice cream market in Europe, and actually it is one of the drivers, of course, for Macadamia nuts. Uh, as uh, pieces of macadamia, so-called brittles, are also used quite quite a lot, uh, uh, increasingly in uh, new ice cream innovations. But generally, overall, uh, almost all of mentioned trends can be summarized and, as one big meta trend, which is called sustainability. And looking we, forward to your presentation about it. I'm going offline. Okay. I will just now uh, show my screen. Okay, I hope that everybody uh, see my screen now. Uh, so uh, the sustainability is uh, the main meta trend in Europe, and uh, not only in Europe, but it is uh, uh, sustainability is the main uh, goal of the United Nations. As I guess you're already familiar with the famous 17 uh, sustainability uh, goals. And of course, European Union also take a big part in many activities in reaching those goals. Uh, and very recently, uh, in May last year, uh, European Union uh, created a, a specific strategy uh, containing a lot of actions towards sustainability, which is called European Green Deal. Uh, and the integral part of European Green Deal is uh, something which is called farm to fork strategy which uh, I'm going to explain very briefly uh, and just to show how it influences many uh, types of, of food uh, trade and consumption, including also uh, macadamia nuts. So the first one, uh, actually the farm uh, fork strategy has uh, five uh, parts. Uh, one is sustainable food production, another uh, sustainable food processing and distribution, the third one sustainable food consumption, and the final one, uh, food loss and waste prevention. And all of them are influencing uh, uh, sourcing of uh, macadamia nuts and all type of food actually in Europe. Uh, so let's uh, have a small uh, look at the first one, which is sustainable uh, food production. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, sustainable food production uh, is already mentioning uh, organic uh, agriculture. Uh, which was mentioned uh, as one of the trends in our poll. Uh, and another one is uh, aim is actually the reduction of pesticide usage. Uh, um, the European Union already actually is decreasing the uh, level of pesticides uh, applied in the food consumed in Europe. Uh, for example, just during this year, uh, the residue level has changed for around 30 pesticides and uh, around 10 of them are relevant uh, for macadamia nuts. Uh, and a uh, very ambitious aim is actually to reduce 50% uh, applications of uh, uh, pesticides uh, until uh, 
2030, so 50% uh, residues of pesticides will be either removed uh, from the market or actually they will be uh, the level of uh, uh, the, the level of residues will be uh, drastically uh, uh, decreased. Uh, another even more ambitious uh, aim is to increase organic production within Europe uh, uh, and uh, the aim is to until 2030 to have 25% of agricultural land under organic uh, farming uh, which is uh, concerning European production, but it is expected that uh, Im out, uh, simultaneously uh, that consumers uh, will be, uh, together with the increasing consumption of locally produced products, they will also increase consumption of imported organic products. Uh, for example, at the moment, uh, organic import represents around 2% of uh, all European imports, uh, and, but the increase rate is quite high. For example, organic European market increased by 8% compared to previous year, but still the full share of organic products is uh, small. It is also valid for macadamia nuts, although, for example, in this slide you can see two examples of uh, uh, organic macadamia products within Europe, uh, but still the share is small, but still uh, tropical fruits, edible nuts and spices are the food categories with the highest import share of organic products. Uh, the next trend, uh, the next uh, uh, part of the sustainable uh, European strategy is sustainable food pr processing and uh, distribution. Uh, one aim is to set maximum level for certain nutrients, uh, which is not the issue for macadamias because macadamia does not have uh, any, uh, uh, how to say, uh, nutrients which can be uh, harmful for human health. Uh, perhaps all salt would would be included. For example, when you uh, sell uh, macadamias in Europe, they are very often salted and roasted. But I don't see the big issue in, in this part. But the uh, much bigger issue is a, a change of food contact materials, uh, which should be compostable and biodegradable. Uh, and um, uh, the aim of a European strategy is to uh, decrease and uh, the, the use of plastics and uh, on this photo you, you we see one typical export package of macadamia nuts uh, but we see that in the coming years it, this is going to change as uh, uh, already traders are asking for the uh, type of packaging uh, which are uh, uh, recyclable and uh, now it's still the challenging and many scientists are now researching and innovating uh, uh, and uh, launching new specific packaging products. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, new innovative biopolymers such as uh, bio-based PP, uh, polypropylene, and uh, PHA, uh, polyhydroxyalkanoids, are, uh, show the highest relative growth rates, but we will see how this is going to develop in the future. So be ready for the change of packaging in the next years. Uh, the next uh, part of the strategy is sustainable food consumption and the European Union wa uh, wants to better inform consumers about the food they eat. Uh, and uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of the aims is uh, to establish mandatory front of package labeling. Uh, why mandatory? Because now uh, in many uh, European countries we already see different types of nutritional labeling. Uh, the one uh, which uh, uh, which is the most famous in Europe is uh, so-called Nutri-Score, the first one that you see on the slides, combining the letters with the colors, uh, and it is already used by uh, uh, for all private labels in France, and it's already spread widely in uh, Belgium and uh, in the Netherlands, and uh, maybe some other countries is, are going to uh, implement this uh, information too. This means that, for example, if you're eating something which is marked with A and with, with, with green color. It is something that you can eat very frequently every day. It's really healthy for you, uh, but you should avoid, for example, the uh, food which is labeled with D. But actually, this is not the only one. And uh, now there is a, a lot of talk and even some opposition, is, is, especially in Italy, uh, which, which is suggesting something new, which is called uh, Nutri Battery. And we, for example, we have example of keyholes uh, in Sweden, uh, traffic light labeling in the United Kingdom and many uh, different approaches. So in the end, uh, the European Commission decided to uh, research all those uh, uh, 
uh, approaches and to come up with one which can be used for uh, all uh, food across the uh, whole European Union. Uh, and uh, all this uh, actually uh, influence uh, uh, sustainability certifications. Uh, why? Because uh, uh, Euro European Union itself cannot be sustainable uh, independently. It, it needs to cooperate with all other countries uh, in the world. And uh, what is expected is that uh, in the current European Union bilateral, uh, bilateral tr uh, free trade agreements with uh, many countries around the world, uh, some kind of very ambitious uh, sustainability clauses will be added in those uh, free trade agreements. Uh, we still don't know how how, how it, uh, it is going to directly impact the sourcing from uh, developing countries, but at the moment we see uh, increasing uh, uh, requests for the some kind of sust uh, sustainability certifications, and maybe in the future we will have some of those sustainability certifications mandatory. Uh, we still don't know uh, when and uh, if that will happen, uh, but uh, now uh, there are already many types of certifications in place. The most famous are some focusing mainly on social and ethical for, uh, aspects, uh, such as uh, fair trade, which is used mainly in developing countries, not so much within uh, traders in Europe, uh, but internationally, uh, most famous is perhaps SMETA uh, by SEDEX, but also we have ethical trading initiative more used in the United Kingdom, uh, Amphori, BSCI, B Corp, uh, Fair for Life, and many others. Uh, also, we have the certifications focusing mainly on environment, environmental aspects, uh, such as Rainfall Reliance, ISO 14000, and we have some specific types focusing on very narrow uh, 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 field of uh, activities uh, such as uh, CEO uh, uh, carbon emission and uh, one uh, recently introduced by one S Switzerland certification uh, company is My Climate and another one is uh, carbon food certification, uh, footprint certification. And also we have some uh, recently introduced, uh, for example, one is used in, in the Netherlands which is called Planet Proof and it covers a wide range of aspects. Uh, Tanya? Sorry. Um, Alex, I think you have one more slide left before we move to a discussion about COVID impact on the markets. Yeah, actually, this is uh, something uh, very specific about macadamias. Uh, and uh, just uh, wanted, uh, aside from those big uh, meta trends, uh, in, which we see in European Union, to mention uh, uh, some trends which are specifically valid for macadamias. Uh, the first one uh, we called uh, not only for macadamias, for but for main type, all all other type of nuts, is uh, healthy snacking, as uh, many European consumers are now uh, consuming more and more. Uh, plant-based products, including nuts. And the nuts are a perfect uh, substitute uh, for animal proteins, and they are more uh, used uh, as ingredient in uh, different uh, uh, food types, but also as a snacking between the meals. Uh, macadamia is a very interesting ingredient. Uh, it has a specific uh, buttery flavor, which is not typical with other nuts uh, in terms of, uh, of shape like say looking it uh, reminds on hazelnuts but uh, the, uh, it has uh, quite a different uh, uh, taste profile and it is uh, interesting for many food uh, innovations uh, still macadamia as you will see later uh, is not uh, widely present in many uh, supermarkets around europe but the share of new product launches containing macadamia is increasing every year and macadamia is becoming more and more popular. Still, it is considered as one uh, of the luxury nuts because the price is like a double compared to cashews or several times uh, more expensive uh, compared to cheaper nuts like peanuts. Uh, but uh, we see examples of some, uh, aside from snacking, uh, we see several types of product innovations on this slide. For example, one, one is macadamia spread, organic. Uh, another one, uh, is the uh, last year or maybe already two years uh, uh, since uh, Ritter Sport, the leading chocolate brand in Germany, uh, launched macadamia chocolate. Uh, we have an uh, example of macadamia nut brittles, which is increasingly used in, um, uh, in ice cream. 
uh, and we have, for example, two uh, two illustrations of those products. Uh, one is uh, one below is Hagen Dazs, which is uh, one of the most famous uh, ice cream brands uh, in the world. Actually, it is established. It, it is United States brand, but also we have one uh, production of the uh, production facilities of this ice cream uh, in France here in Europe. And uh, uh, the final one is uh, increasing uh, appearance of uh, cereals, nuts, and dried fruit bars. Uh, which are used as healthy snacking and which are also very uh, popular among the sport and wellness population. And of course, organic is one uh, of the trends. Uh, but uh, as we see, the price uh, can decrease in the future because it is something what you expect uh, when more and more products are entering the market marketing because of the bigger co competition. That's very interesting, uh, Alexander. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, you mentioned that, for example, the, the, the product innovations from academia that we see on the market today, that uh, there's, there's, there's uh, the Haagen-Dazs ice cream, um, recommend it if you haven't tasted it before, um, and there are the sport bars, the nutritional bars that are usually used by sports, for example, but we've had a very strange year, I think I can call it, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic. So. I could imagine that as a result of that, that there's an impact on the market or even on the market opportunities. Could you very briefly take us through that, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, I will mention a little bit about COVID-19 impact of, uh, uh, of sourcing of macadamia nuts. And uh, macadamia nut sourcing in Europe uh, was not hugely affected by COVID-19. Uh, pandemic. Uh, we saw uh, more impact in some other type of nuts like cashews because in some production countries people have restrictions with movement etc. But here uh, uh, the sourcing actually was not highly impacted. Uh, uh, firstly uh, because the season uh, was happening uh, not in the, during the peaks. Uh, for example now uh, now we can uh, uh, see uh, that Kenya pro uh, season is just starting now. Uh, and now we have already the third peak of the COVID-19, so uh, traders already get used to uh, deal with the import of macadamias during uh, uh, this uh, strange year. And uh, uh, as you see on the left part of the slide, we see the statistics of import during 2019-2020. Uh, uh, in the first uh, half of the year, actually between April and September during the COVID-2020 uh, impact. And as you can see, uh, we see uh, that uh, import from Australia increased uh, in April and May compared to the previous year, but in June, uh, July, August, already it, uh, it flattened. Uh, and uh, when we talk about imports from South Africa, it uh, drastically increased in April compared, for example, it, in, in the April it was imported nearly 400 tons. And uh, at the same time, during the same time during last year, it was 50 tons. But still, this is not a big indication that COVID-19 is impacting some, something really badly. Uh, African crop is lower than planned in the in all three major suppliers. Uh, and we can say that we cannot expect a lot of stocks for 2021 because uh, production was low and most of the uh, macadamia kernels are already offered and uh, uh, sold uh, on the market. When we talk about uh, uh, impact on consumption, uh, macadamias are uh, uh, promoted uh, as uh, uh, not with a good for lowering your bad cholesterol and also helping your health health, but they are not super promoted as uh, immunity boosters, for example, like cashews. So uh, uh, social media didn't impact a lot uh, uh, consumption of macadamia nuts because uh, of immunity properties. Uh, although we cannot officially say that any nut can prevent COVID-19 infection, uh, but uh, on the other hand, some nuts are uh, very famous by immunity boosters. Uh, what we uh, see, uh, uh, which is related to all type of nuts and food, that retail and online sales goes up and food service is, of course, down because of many restrictions and people not eating in restaurants at the moment. Uh, more people are uh, preparing food at home. And because of increasing demand for quality pieces, uh, we see um, uh, bigger sales of halves and chips like styles four, style five, style six. 
which is not related to COVID-19 only. Uh, which is this is just the general trend of increasing macadamia as, as in ingredient. So, Tonya. Yes, thank you, Alexander. That's uh, that's very interesting. And there's actually a question that's come in uh, for you about the impact of COVID-19, which we will get to in just a couple of minutes, Michelle. Um, before we do, I would like to invite Mr. Borchert to uh, comment on the presentation, Mr. Borchert and Mr. White, actually, to comment on the presentation that uh, Alex just gave, particularly when it comes to the market opportunities. Um, Mr. Borchardt, may I start with you? You are an importer. So based on what Alexander has told us uh, and based on the, tr the, the trends that he's mentioned and based on the opportunities that he's mentioned, what recommendations would you have for exporters who are looking at ways or what ways could they, let me rephrase that, how could they use these trends and these uh, uh, opportunities and these characteristics that Alexander has mentioned um, as business opportunities? How could they transform that into business opportunities? Could you comment on that, please? Well, yes, uh, I can only talk mainly about the German market. Uh, Germany will still have a huge uh, snack consumption. Um, there are some items uh, like the brittle uh, and also the uh, uh, caramelized macadamia pieces going into ice cream. Uh, some, some parts are manufactured in Germany, I know, and some parts are manufactured in Holland. Um, <clears throat> The snack or the ingredient part is something we are trying to focus on as well. Um, it's very difficult uh, because the first uh, problem you bounce into is when you offer such product to, let's say, a chocolate manufacturer, they always complain about the high price of macadamias. Um, this is partially true, but uh, you can sell the product as a premium product, and that's why the ice cream people probably use it. Uh, the percentage, unfortunately, of macadamias in those products is very low uh, when you really look at the ingredient list. Uh, however, the challenge for the macadamia industry has always been that they are not making just whole kernels. Uh, I think, depending on the crack out, uh, probably only 30% would be whole kernels, and uh, the balance would be uh, pieces and uh, fragments and flour and so on. So you need to find ways to market those items as well. Um, one idea could be the macadamia spread. Uh, in Germany, it's not that popular, but I know that in other European countries, uh, spreads are welcome. I mean, in Holland, for example, there's a good consumption. Um, every European country has different, let's say, eating habits as well. Uh, some people use them for cooking. Uh, we have one item on the shelf which is roasted but not salted and uh, unfortunately the supermarkets here still uh, prefer the roasted and salted uh, because their shelf is very limited mm. uh, but uh, we know from consumer reactions that uh, they like the unsalted version as well because salt okay. is not very healthy second and second is they can use it for cooking or put it on a salad or whatever okay that's, uh, that's, that's really interesting. Um, let me just switch very quickly to Alex uh, at, at the moment. Uh, Mr. White, you're an exporter and listening to the presentation that uh, Alexander just gave and listening to what Mr. Borger just said, how do you transform these trends into business, frankly? And I see Mr. Borger has uh, left us. Could you please come back? Because we, I might ask you to respond to what Alex is saying. Alex? I see Alex is still muted. OK, you should be. Okay, muted now. Um, yeah, I think I agree what, with what Yen said. Um, you know, there is a real opportunity for the, the macadamia industry and this vegan and sustainable, they're all intellect, sustainability, vegan, orga organic. They're all sort of uh, part of the same mega trend in a sense. Um, and macadamias have their pl uh, part to play in that. So I think one of the biggest things that has held us back has really been we're a very small volume uh, product. 
in the world crop at the moment so roughly 60,000 tons of kernel. Um, and if you compare that to the other tree nuts like almonds, which is roughly 1.3 million tons, or hazelnuts, which is sort of over 700,000 tons, it just puts it in perspective how small we are. So, you know, we, we haven't actually reached a critical mass yet to perhaps get the really big food manufacturers like a Unilever or Ferrero or one of these guys to take macadamia seriously. Um, but as Alessandra um, mentioned earlier, the, the volumes are going to increase substantially over the next few years. So I think with more volume will come, um, perhaps we're, we're going to get more on the radar uh, in this plant-based space. Um, uh, the vegan, the, the macadamia's high fat content is very interesting, I think, as an application in foods. So um, that could be dairy replacement um, or as a, a replacement of animal fat, as a replacement of butter. Um, macadamia milks, perhaps vegan ice creams. There's lots of opportunities for us. Um, what really is key, I think, is quality. And, and that is two things, the taste of the product itself. You can't put poor quality out in the marketplace and also food safety. Um, the big food manufacturers are terrified of uh, launching a product and having a, a product recall because of the food recall safety. So it's really important that those two things are key and are taken seriously at uh, by the exporter, and um, and hopefully if we're if we're doing the job correctly, um, the opportunities will come the way. As a, you know, as I said, there's there are some fantastic things on the horizon which which can offer the macadamia industry a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities. That's a that's that's a very interesting segue to. Our first question, and uh, for our audience, we're moving into our Q and A session. Um, one of the questions that that's come in, and I think this question is going to be of particular interest to Jens and uh, Alex, is, and you touched on this already, Alex. What is the what is the European market for macadamia oil? Um, is there is there a significant market? Could you could you say something about it? And uh, Jens, maybe you could too. Um, uh, what what? Funnily enough, the biggest use still um, is as a cosmetic, uh, using the cosmetic industry, so not as an edible oil. Um, and I think that's really just because of consumer unawareness. They don't realize what a fantastic product it is uh, and the uses of it. If it's put on a shelf um, next to olive oil, it just looks like a, a really expensive oil um, and people don't realize all the applications. So. That will probably come in time um, with more consumer awareness of the product, but the, the use of uh, as a cosmetic product is quite high. The, the oil itself has some fantastic properties, which um, a lot of uh, creams, uh, hand creams or face creams, things like that, the oil itself has a lot of properties which make it uh, a great app in those applications. So um, yes, that, that's just an opportunity. I definitely need to look into that. Uh, hand creams and face creams sounds very interesting. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually 200 years old. I've just been using a lot of Ah, macadamia. you see, the viewers, you see, macadamia oil has amazing properties, clearly. <laughs> uh, Jens, could you, could you say something uh, about, about the consumer awareness? Alex just said that part of getting macadamia oil more mainstream, I would say, in the EU, has to do with consumer unawareness about the fantastic and, as we have heard, rejuvenating properties of the macadamia oil. You're an importer. Um, what are you doing in terms of consumer awareness for macadamia oil, but also for other, other macadamia products? Well, we have tried to sell some macadamia oil. There's a market also for, let's say, food consumption. Uh, the problem has always been short supply in particular well, over the last few years. Um, the other point is that the oil is made from byproducts. I mean, you're not pressing oil from good and sound kernels. Uh, you better sell them for snacking and for baking and whatever. So it's a very competitive business. Uh, sometimes I'm wondering how you can make a macadamia oil at that price uh, when you consider the price for the whole counts uh, in particular. So <clears throat> yes, there's uh, still a lot of, let's say, lack of consumer awareness about the health aspects of macadamia. Uh, the oil is actually very good, uh, not just for your skin, but also for your veins. So 
a lot of nuts and dried fruits actually we are selling uh, have a lot of health benefits the consumers may know but uh, i would say 80 percent don't know anything about it uh, okay. we, see, we see kind of kind of a trend right now with covid that people want to treat themselves at home so uh, on the german retail business we can see good increases let's say on overall our products nuts and dried fruits uh, and also for premium products so they are spending more money for better quality and do and this is a question for the for the for the broad panel i would say um do you feel that well no let me rephrase that there's obviously a, a potential to create a bigger consumer awareness for macadamia products and nuts and uh, uh products from my, created from macadamia who do you think should be in the lead to increase that consumer awareness and alexander I know it's not really the marketing is not really your area of speciality, but as a market expert, what um, what thoughts do you have on that? Yeah, of course, uh, uh, consumption can and uh, must be incre increased, especially in the central and eastern Europe. For example, in Western Europe, you already have quite a lot of brands, and the private labels already are selling. Uh, as you can see in the later uh, part of the presentation, uh, several countries actually uh, selling uh, macadamia nuts as a uh, snacks in retail packaging or private labels mostly and in some countries private label already dominating the market so actually many actions uh, towards those uh, retailers can uh, can support the promotion because uh, people are uh, they, can, they can do a big deal of, of promotion and on the other hand there is a uh, uh, macadamia not uh, international society actually alex is i i guess a part of that uh, promoting the consumption of macadamia nuts uh, through international nuts and dried fruit council informing consumers about the many health benefits and we, uh, i think i mentioned in the previous slides some of them and they can be uh, promoting uh, promoted more and uh, it should be based on the scientific basis more of the uh, social uh, media are needed to to do this because especially younger people are now uh, do not watch tv do not read so much like before but they are extremely active on social media platforms and as you okay. can see cashew nuts during covid19 increased in consumption although many of the data are not valid actually people were telling on the internet that when you eat cash you can prevent covid19 infection which is not true uh, although uh, cashews are good for the immunity, uh, but uh, on the other hand, macadamia promoters were not so active uh, in Europe, especially. In Australia, they are very much active, but in Europe, no. Okay. And Alex, that's a great segue to you. Uh, I mean, you look amazing. So clearly, macadamia is doing fantastic things for you. What are you doing in terms of building consumer awareness? Um, yeah, so I think, you know, as, a, as being a relatively small industry, and also quite fragmented globally, um, you know, we're not like, say, almonds, which are 80% grown in one, one part of the US, California, we spread across the whole of the Southern Hemisphere and Northern Hemisphere, in, that, in fact. So we, we haven't really had a very unified um, approach to promoting macadamias. There is uh, some plans underway at the moment to create a, a world macadamia organization. So that is um, coming together of all origins. Um, at the moment, it's, I think, just South Africa and Australia who are really uh, supporting it. But the hope is that we could get all the various origins to, to contribute um, expertise, but also funding uh, to promote macadamias. Um, I think the first step is really health research. There's been very limited health research done on macadamias. Compared to other nuts, we've kind of ridden on their coattails because the almond industry and hazelnuts and walnuts have spent a lot of money actually understanding what the unique health benefits are of their product. Whereas macadamias, we still we have a lot of vague information, but really, really we we need to delve more into that so we can find what really differentiates us and what are our very special health benefits um, that, yeah. that macadamias yeah. have over other nuts. So um, I think hopefully this will be um, you know the the organization itself is going to help coordinate this a lot better um i think working together the various origins working together we can accomplish a lot more than trying to sort of fight each other um, and put each other down we are such a small industry there's a lot more we can achieve together um through an organization collaboration like that. is um collaboration is really, uh 
in 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 that okay and uh looking at the time and uh we have a, we have a couple of questions that have come in there's one more about a COVID-19, which I'd like to address in just a second. Um, and there are a couple of questions that have to do with importing and um, uh, alternative macadamia products. We will get to your questions. I'd like to push them to the second Q&A session when we have uh, when we can take some more time to 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 really expand on on the answers to the questions. And uh, some of the questions that I'm seeing coming in are going to be addressed in the in, in the coming presentations as well. But just um, two questions to close this Q&A. Um, Jens, in terms of the collaboration that uh, Alex was just referring to, in one maybe two sentences, very briefly, please. Is there already collaboration going on in terms of building the market, expanding the market for macadamia in Europe? Uh, well, as Alex said, uh, the driver is the Australian Macadamia Society. Um, they put a lot of money uh, in marketing <clears throat> and they also have, let's say, newsletters, for example. Um, I remember uh, when we were taking place uh, or part in the first meetings at the INC, which is the International Nut Council or today it's the Nuts and Dry Food, the group of macadamia people was extremely small, maybe five or six uh, taking place. And uh, we had to, to go down a very long, stony road just to figure out how we can, let's say, put a standard for the quality together. Um, over the years, this group has developed very well, and there are more and more participants um, uh, bringing the input into this uh, business. And uh, I think that's a, a very important part. The INC is okay. already uh, also conducting a study, as far as I heard, but it's all taking a lot of time and, it's, of course, a lot of money. So yeah, uh, clearly still not, uh, still a lot of work yeah, that that needs yeah, to be done no in that area. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alexander, one quick question for you to finalize our, Q and our first Q&A session. Um, COVID-19. Fungi is mentioned as a sourcing topic and you refer to aflatoxins. I've missed the, I think I missed the fungi. Uh, um, yeah, in actually. Your yeah, the incidence of aflatoxins, aflatoxins, could you say something about it? No, no, no. It is, it is mentioned as one of the, uh, of the uh, aspects uh, affecting production. And I guess that Alex can t tell uh, as a producer much more about that. Actually, it is the uh, appearance of the, uh, of the blossom uh, disease, which is called uh, Botrytis cinerea in Latin name. And it is actually not 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 something new, but it is common in more ma many macadamia countries. That actually, if you do not, uh, uh, it is produce producers issue. If you do not uh, implement the uh, pest uh, integrated pest management and uh, right uh, protect your macadamia trees, uh, this can uh, drastically affect your production and decrease production. This is the, okay. something that, that okay. we faced during the past year. Okay, thank you. And uh, about, uh, Alex. Just to say that uh, macadamia is not generally affected a lot uh, by aflatoxins, it, which is very good for this industry, but we have a lot of salmonella, for example, issues, uh, especially in the United States. In Europe, it is a little bit better control. I would say so official European institutions do not report frequently about salmonella, but in the United States, we have um, quite a lot of cases about salmonella. Uh, okay. In, okay. Okay, okay, thank you for that. And Alex, I'd like to come back to you, not now, but in our second Q&A session, um, with a follow-up uh, on this in terms of some of the problems that you face as, uh, as, as a producer, as a macadamia producer, and how you tackle them in terms of um, exporting to other countries. For now, however, I'd like to thank our panel for the first Q&A session. And don't worry if your question hasn't been answered yet. It's going to be answered in the second Q&A session. So I'm seeing all the questions coming in as I'm, uh, as I'm talking, as I'm moderating. So we're going to be answering your questions in just a couple of minutes. But for now, I'd like to uh, thank our panel, particularly Jens and uh, Alex, and continue with Alexander to talk about the trends on the European markets, talk about the main markets that uh, we see in Europe and where those opportunities are. Alexander, could I ask you to start your presentation? Yes, I will just show very quick uh, snapshot of the largest uh, markets in Europe, but later on we can focus a little bit more on some uh, specific markets. Uh, so just to say what, what was happening actually in the last uh, 
a couple of years. Uh, during the fa last five uh, years, the consumption was increasing in Europe uh, by the average annual rate of 3% uh, uh, in the last uh, five years. But the dynamics was different in different countries. And as you, you can see, the largest importers are Germany, uh, followed by the Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, but on the other hand, when we see at the consumption side, uh, uh, look, we see that actually the Netherlands is, uh, as in many other products, uh, mainly trader, not so big consumer, and Belgium is not on the list. Uh, so the, at the moment, the five largest consumers uh, of macadamia nuts, according to the uh, calculations of imports and exports, are Germany, followed by Spain, United Kingdom, Switzerland, uh, France, and uh, the Netherlands. Um, the total volumes are not so huge in 2009 compared uh, re relatively, I mean, compared to other nuts. And in 2019, import reached uh, nearly 10,000 tons, 2.9 thousand tons. Uh, and consumption was, some of that was re-exported and stocked. So consumption is actually estimated to 6.5 thousand ton, uh, tons. And uh, according to INC, the largest consumer in Germany, uh, eating something around 50 grams per year in 2018. Uh, in shell import, it is mainly a kernel import. In shell import is very small. Uh, it is uh, less than 50 tons. And very interestingly, actually, the uh, something like 20, 30 tons, which is really, really small, uh, are coming from Guatemala, which is not recognized in one of the leading suppliers of kernels. Uh, it is just uh, interesting to mention. And just about the pricing, very small in sight. Uh, this graph is show some of the price developments over the last uh, uh, three or actually four years. Uh, and we see the kernel prices for three different styles from South Africa and Australia. Uh, and uh, the price uh, uh, during the first half of 2020 were quite stable as, you, as we see. But of course, when the production goes down, like in this year, we can expect the uh, price increase. Uh, so uh, this is the small uh, main pattern uh, which many nuts producers are familiar around the world. Uh, that the price is more influenced by the production, especially when uh, production is concentrated in few countries and if, uh, when the total production is not so huge. So, for example, if the production in South Africa goes down, we can see price increase and we can also see consumption decrease, not because it, there is no demand, but simply because there is not enough markets and nuts on the market. So this is very uh, short about statistic, uh, statistics in Europe. Thank you for that, uh, Alexander. And, um... You have prepared a presentation about, uh, frankly, all the markets uh, in Europe, but we thought it would be best to give you, our viewers, the choice of which two markets we should actually talk about today. So I am going to ask you to participate in another poll, actually, a very quick poll, and frankly, choose the two markets that you are most interested in. And I am now launching the poll. Okay, there's a lot of interest in Germany, I see, as well as in the UK and Netherlands. About half our audience has voted, so I'm leaving it open just a little longer. And if you haven't voted yet, this is your opportunity. I'm closing the poll in about five seconds. And these are the results. Germany, uh, clearly the number one market that you are interested in learning about and the Netherlands, the second market that you are interested in. So clearly, Alexander, I think, um, I'm trying to make you a presenter again, just a second. 
But I think it's very clear who our uh, attendees, the markets that our entities are uh, interested in. And I would like to invite you to continue with your presentation about Germany and the Netherlands while I actually load all so that you can continue. Okay, and uh, do you see my screen again? Uh, currently, I don't see your screen. Would you like me to share the screen? Okay, just a sec. Yes, I'm no, seeing your okay. screen. Okay, so we selected Germany and the Netherlands. It's quite interesting because it was like uh, the order, uh, right statistical order by the volume of imports. So we will spend a few minutes on uh, two of the, those countries and uh, uh, participants who would like to learn more about other countries can read it from the uh, CBI website. And in the couple of weeks, uh, CBI will update the study and you will have uh, also new countries like Switzerland explained. Uh, uh, very shortly, uh, uh, we can say that, uh, which is already obvious, that German is the largest uh, importer of macadamia uh, nuts in Europe. Uh, in, in, during the last year, German, German import value of macadamia was uh, 61 million euros in total, uh, which is around 38% of total European imports. Uh, German imports of macadamia nuts increasing annually by 4% in volume. Uh, and it reached around 3.7 thousand tons in 2019. Uh, we can also say that a lot of trade uh, exchange between, uh, there is a lot of trade exchange between Germany and the Netherlands. Uh, and for example, uh, Germany imported 1.2 thousand tons from the Netherlands, not directly from the producing uh, countries, uh, but also it exported around 450 tons to the Netherlands. Uh, so, uh, because of that, the Netherlands is the, ranked as the first supplier, or already uh, obviously not uh, producing, but uh, reselling, uh, re-exporting, importing macadamia, macadamia nuts. And uh, when we talk about the market entry uh, in uh, Germany, uh, firstly, I think that uh, Jens will tell a little bit more about German market uh, specifically. Uh, but we can say generally that it is price competitive market because of the large dominance of the private labels, uh, which are uh, all competing on the price basis. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Germany has very high requirements, uh, very fre frequent laboratory testing of the samples and uh, requesting high quality grades. Uh, and uh, uh, many suppliers are asked to be certified by uh, uh, food safety uh, certificates uh, and one of the most popular schemes uh, at least in German is IFS although many other certifications can be also used. Uh, interestingly uh, although the organic market is not so huge uh, for macadamias in total also in Germany uh, still the German is the largest organic market in Europe uh, and uh, aside from the Euro uh, European Union logo we can see on the products uh, specific German Natural land logo on very specific kind of certifications, which is called Demeter. Not very familiar uh, at the moment with macadamia nuts producers, uh, at least with most of them. But this is one niche opportunity for uh, Germany. But we can tell uh, talk only about small quantities. Um, and we have other, another type of certifications. Uh, interestingly, we, we already have one example of a uh, company which is called Limbua, which is Kenyan a German corporation selling specifically organic macadamias in Europe. Uh, what we can see there, there is increasing supply from Africa and decreasing from Australia, uh, at least over the last few uh, years. Uh, and uh, when we talk about specific uh, trends products in the companies, there is a lot uh, to say, but I will try to, to be uh, short. Uh, of course, healthy snacking uh, is a trend. Uh, appearance of organic products is also another trend and the new applications. Uh, when we talk about new applications, we need to be aware that still most of the nuts are sold as a snack. Uh, and it is common not only for macadamias, but for others. And so we see appearance of the new products. I already mentioned, uh, and there is illustration here of chocolate vina macadamia, and also we have some spreads but the consumption of those is still uh, small and limited. Uh, when we talk about companies, we have quite a lot of companies. Many of them are located in Hamburg as the largest uh, import European uh, uh, import port. Uh, and we have only a few of them here mentioned. Uh, some of them are brands like uh, Z Burger, uh, 
uh, but some of them are big traders. Uh, and also we have the agents in Germany, uh, but we need to be aware uh, that agent uh, is not very simple the way of business, like many many uh, uh, suppliers can imagine. It's not that agent only taking the like two percent fee and after that resell product in Europe. Uh, it's not like maybe it was uh, in in past, but now the supply chain is becoming more and more transparent. So uh, the retailers would like to see the origin of the product. Uh, so actually, agents are now participating in the tenders of the retailers, and uh, this uh, uh, job is quite difficult, uh, very competitive. And yes, I think we will tell a little bit more about that. Uh, so I mentioned just few of the names of the direct German importers of macadamia nuts, but there are of course more. Uh, what we see also is vertical integration, that some of the German companies are trying to develop business in the uh, countries of origin. Uh, and uh, also we can say very specifically for Germany that private labels are dominating uh, sales and the private labels are very leading in Europe. Uh, the most of the quantities are sold by these counters like Lidl and Aldi and we have also some many other uh, uh, discounters and one of the misperceptions could be that uh, this, that the retail, uh, supermarkets with the highest uh, share like Edeka and Rewe also are selling the most of the quantities which is wrong actually the most of the quantities in Germany are sold by discounters uh, because uh, we already mentioned this is a price competitive market. Uh, and we see uh, uh, we see uh, quite interesting organic brands, and many of them are sold by the specialized organic uh, shops or uh, uh, organic retail chains like Al Natura or Dance. But we also see uh, sales of macadamia nuts within the variety shops like DM or Rossmann. Uh, we, uh, Jens will tell a little bit more about requirements and the tender uh, tenders in in uh, in, uh, in Germany. And uh, up aside from private label, I can mention a few of the brands like Lawrence, Zieberber, Zieberger, uh, Farmer Snack, uh, Max Kiene. Those are the companies uh, selling uh, macadamias uh, as own brands, but also they are also direct importers, not only packers. Uh, so this would be very shortly about Germany. I will now switch to say a few words about uh, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands is a, a leading European trade hub, but as you see, uh, the import is a little bit decreasing. Uh, we cannot say that it will be long-term forecast, but uh, one of the reasons could be that many of the German traders are importing more from the origins. Uh, as you can see, the 23, uh, uh, most of the imports in the Netherlands is uh, uh, import, uh, macadamia uh, to the Netherlands imported from Kenya, which is quite opposite to the, the different from the from from Germany. Uh, and um, uh, import reached 2.5 thousand tons, uh, which is around uh, 36 uh, million euros uh, during the last uh, year. Uh, also, we can see that the uh, presence of Australia is only around 10% uh, in the Netherlands as the market. Uh, one specific trend for the uh, Netherlands is a big presence uh, of and, uh, different sustainability initiatives. Uh, and uh, for example, there is international sustainability nut initiative at the moment working more, mostly with cashew nuts uh, and sourcing from Asia and Africa. Uh, but also we have different other uh, types of initiatives also trying to include all nuts including macadamias. Uh, Netherlands also we have a very small import of in-shell nuts, uh, but in general uh, the, most of the nuts are sold only as kernels and the only I just I would just like to mention not the Netherlands but the UK uh, as far as I know the UK Tesco uh, retail chain is the maybe at the moment one of the rare examples uh, offering small quantities of uh, in shell nuts and they are sold uh, uh, together with some uh, shelling device uh, in the small packaging. Uh, uh, in shell uh, consumption is not typical for Europe, it is more uh, typical for China. Uh, what we see in the Netherlands that uh, the share of developing countries is increasing and see new uh, we see new emerging suppliers uh, from uh, like Malawi and uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, and just to say a little bit about the uh, internal consumption, uh, internal market of the Netherlands is not so huge. Uh, we have uh, 
sales completely dominated by private labels, mainly uh, Albert Hein, but also Lidl, uh, Jumbo, uh, and we have some specialist packers like Food Trend, but uh, uh, in, uh, uh, very differently to Germany, uh, it's very difficult to find independent brands uh, with big shares because uh, sales are really dominated by retailers. Uh, like in other uh, markets, we see some of the new product launches. For example, this is illustration of popular chocolate brand, by, uh, which combine macadamias with cashews and with raisins, uh, but still most of the consumption goes to the retail uh, uh, packs and uh, those are illustration of some uh, packs uh, and uh, also plant-based diets and uh, healthy thinking and, and all salted nuts are something that we see as one of the trends. So I think uh, I need to stop here to leave a little bit more uh, uh, space for the questions and answers but I hope that we helped uh, with a small illustration of the two biggest uh, uh, import markets of macadamias in Europe. Thank you for that, Alexander. And uh, for our viewers, please uh, feel free to uh, to ask your questions about the presentation that Alexander just gave, um, because we're we're going to extend our Q and A session at the end of the webinar to be able to answer uh, as many of your questions as possible. Um, we're about to move to Mr. Borges' presentation, and everything that Alex has just said is based on the market research uh, that he has done and has been doing over the past years. And Mr. Borges is going to tell us about the practical importer's view. What are the things that you run into, and um, how is the market, and how does it work, for example? Mr. Borges, may I invite you to come online and um, start your presentation? Okay, here we go. Uh, I don't really have very good news for the Kenyan industry at this moment. Um, it's very hard to read this chart. Um, it's, uh, from the Lebensmittel Zeitung, and they publish this on an annual basis. Um, you have the top 30 in a list of retailers in Germany. The biggest food retailer actually is the Edeka Group. They are only uh, selling or having stores in Germany. They are not in any other European country. Um, and then you have the discount chains like uh, Aldi, Lidl, um, Revi, which is similar to the Edeka group with supermarkets, but also uh, having a discount chain called Penny. And uh, there's also the Edeka group owning now a group called Netto, which are pure discounters. And uh, the very well-known, let's say, Metro Group with regards to food is uh, now just on the sixth place. And uh, as you can see here, the uh, statistic that their uh, share in the market is extremely small. They really shrunk over the years. Uh, with regards to macadamias, we still believe that Aldi is by far the biggest seller of macadamias. Aldi has also shops uh, in Europe, but also in the United States and in Australia. <clears throat> and it's interesting, the sourcing from Aldi is basically done through the German or now the Austrian office, even international. And if, for example, you are an Australian macadamia manufacturer, and you have delivered Aldi Australia in the past directly, you have to participate at tenders uh, in Europe, or Germany and Austria in this case. Lidl is pretty much the same. They are having more stores than Aldi in the meantime. They are very aggressive uh, with expansion. Uh, and also at Lidl, the sourcing in general is globally done uh, through the German headquarters. Uh, Lidl belongs to the group uh, Schwarz, where you can also find Kaufland, which is kind of a discount hypermarket outlet. They have big stores uh, with more items, a lot of uh, brands as well. Uh, in comparison to the normal discount business here, which is almost 95% uh, private label, so their own brand 
and they don't carry, they have not carried any particular uh, known brands in the past. This is changing now because the discount chains seem to be losing a little bit of ground uh, versus the supermarkets. In particular, during the Corona lockdowns, the shoppers apparently decided to go to one shop where they can get everything they need, uh, which has a much uh, broader or wider assortment, like a supermarket has 10,000 and more items, and the discount store may only have maybe 2,000 today. So they have to become creative. Um, only, let's say, five or four uh, supermarket chains in Germany actually really dominate this whole business. Anything else is uh, on a very low percentage scale, unfortunately. Uh, can you change to the next slide, please? <clears throat> Okay, you can see that uh, the top six uh, represent, according to my estimation, 70% of the entire business. So maybe you can read that as Edeka uh, still leading with the biggest turnover, uh, including Netto, which is one of the discount outlets. And then you have the Riri Group. They call it full sortiment, which means they have a full range of products, uh, huge supermarkets. But they also uh, run an uh, outlet called Penny. Then you have the Schwarz Group, uh, which is number three now in Germany, uh, but expanding very aggressively also overseas in the United States and Australia, and uh, also in many European countries. <clears throat> uh, Amazon is coming up with uh, number five, as I could see. Um, they are not that strong in the food yet, but they also run a nut and dry food uh, private label brand now. Uh, we don't know who's uh, manufacturing that for them, but uh, uh, I think Amazon will not disappear in the near future. <clears throat> then you can see the Metro Group. The Metro Group is very, very small. Uh, today uh, they are losing shares and they also sold a lot of activities, uh, not just in Germany, but in Europe and also in overseas. And next slide. <clears throat> So Germany is probably the largest consumer of macadamias within the EU, about 80% uh, are for snacking. <clears throat> and this was already mentioned by Alexander who did a really good research. 70% uh, of the German retail business is, the, is in the hand of the six players and uh, about 80% of the macadamia distribution in German retail is in the hands of five discount chains. So even the Edeka being the largest food uh, outlet in Germany or in, Europe, uh, in Germany, um, their macadamia sales in comparison to, let's say, Aldi are maybe 10 or 20 percent. Uh, organic is also something which is growing in the discount segment. Um, supply had always been the issue. Um, we had quite some inquiries for organic products, but uh, we couldn't get or we couldn't find significant supply so far. Next slide. <clears throat> With the discounters in particular, I call them the retailer. <clears throat> one of the issues is that they only tender their business one time a year. Uh, Today, it's uh, via an internet platform where you have to uh, go through, we have counted the pages, probably almost 60 pages today, um, where you have to click and confirm uh, all the requirements. Um, one key is that the product has to be produced or packaged in a facility which is IFS food certified. Um, Germany is very much focusing on IFS, where other European countries, in particular the UK, they accept BRCs. This is not the case anymore in Germany. Everyone is insisting on IFS food. Uh, so we have to look for processing facilities who have that uh, standard. And uh, one of the points, for example, is if you, if you tender, you have to put in the certificate number and it will be checked online whether the certificate is still valid or not. Um, the other part is the problem that they 
they tender very specific standards and origins, basically. Um, I mentioned it here. Um, currently, they only tender South Africa, Australia, and maybe Malawi. And in current tenders, actually, Kenya is excluded. So there might have been an issue with the quality in the past, maybe. Um, and it's very difficult to crack this, uh, let's say, opinion or understanding. Uh, we are trying to, but uh, uh, they are very much fo focusing on their previous experience and uh, they are not going to change that real quickly. Um, the size requirements have also changed. So today they all tender the same uh, size and rates. They want 70% uh, style one, and the size has to be 17 millimeters and bigger. So nothing smaller. And uh, I can be, you can be rest assured that they are checking this quality as well. Um, in the couple, last couple of years, we experienced that the retailers are sending samples or they are instructing laboratories to send in samples, which they buy actually on the supermarket shelf. And they test and analyze these products in accordance with their specification and standards. And uh, when there's something wrong with the product, the importer or the seller uh, has to explain it. And uh, they also can uh, put quite some pressure on you there's something wrong. Uh, as Alexander also pointed out, uh, pesticide residues are quite a problem or an issue in the EU. Uh, aflatoxin with macadamias is not a big challenge because the nut has such a hard shell. Uh, and they are dried um, very quickly, actually, after harvest. Um, there are more issues with uh, salmonella, for example, or sanitation issues. Uh, and uh, a lot of the products actually we even sell to uh, ingredient manufacturers, they are treated uh, with heat or steam or whatever, just to avoid uh, uh, any uh, issues with that. So <clears throat> this has been the one of the challenges. Uh, one of the reasons why you can see less uh, products from Australia is simple. Australia's crops have not really grown that, that fast. And uh, for example, South Africa has a free trade agreement with uh, the EU. So there's 0% duty, the same probably with Kenya uh, or some other African countries where Australia still has a 2% duty. Uh, for roasted, uh, as this consumption in Germany is basically roasted, uh, you need to have uh, the roaster in place here, you, it won't really make much sense to import roasted products because the duty would be higher and the quality would uh, be a problem and then packaging as well, uh, the flexibility and transportation costs, etc. they don't really make much sense. So next slide, maybe. Uh, the next slide is actually our uh, one. Edition. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, but uh, please stay online and I'm going to invite uh, the rest of our panelists to come back online as well. And uh, Jens, you've already tackled a couple of the questions that came in in your uh, presentation, particularly the question that had to do with uh, the market for roasted, uh, for value added uh, products, macadamia products like uh, roasted nuts, for example. And uh, I, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that uh, transportation and uh, quality could be big issues at this moment, so that there's currently not really a market for importing the value added products. Is that correct? Uh, yes, basically for the German market, it doesn't really make much sense. Um, we have a lot of roasters located in Germany or surrounded uh, from Germany, like in the Netherlands, where it's the uh, Intersnick Group. Uh, but you also have companies like Max Kine and whatever. Everyone has its roasters. So it won't be really competitive. And the flexibility is an issue, actually. OK, thank you. And uh, while we wait for Alex to join us, I would just like to take this opportunity to say, ah, there you are, Alex, thank you. And Mariah, may I invite you to join us as well? You're a new face to our audience. Um, yes, there she comes. 
your new face to our audience and I would just like to give you a couple of seconds to quickly introduce yourself because I think people are going to be very interested in who you are and what you're going to do. Thank you, uh, Tonia. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, for those who don't know me yet, my name is Mariah Klomp. Um, I'm the program manager um, for the very first Macadamia project uh, of CBI, which will start next year. And this, uh, this is actually a project that we will start running in Kenya. Um, uh, and I'd like to wish you a very warm welcome, especially um, our Kenyan uh, participants in this, uh, in this webinar, of course. Um, we have selected uh, Kenya because it's such a large producer of uh, macadamia nuts. Um, and we have analyzed the sector as CBI and seen um, that there are still a lot of opportunities to add more value to the product and increase quality so that um, you can increase your exports um, to the European Union. Um, and of course, there are many uh, obstacles um, that we have to um, that we have to uh, crack uh, to stay in the uh, in the nut uh, vocabulary. Um, and one of them is um, that we need to increase cooperation between the processors and the associations, government institutions, and the supply chain in Kenya. And with a, a concerted effort, I think um, we can really uh, promote Kenya as a very good source country for macadamia nuts. We'll and thank you for that. Uh, th thank you for that, Mariah, because uh, I'd, I'd like to just jump in here very quickly, um, because we, we just heard a really fantastic presentation from Alexander, specifying the two biggest markets, two biggest European markets, and uh, uh, expanding on the possibilities that those markets offer for various producers from developing countries. And then, of course, we had the presentation from uh, Jens telling us, frankly, that Kenyan exports are banned. So I would like to put this question to the panel, to the entire panel. When it comes to entering the European market, and maybe there are a couple of sub-questions here. Um, this is obviously going to be very interesting for the Kenyan exporters because how do you how do you enter the market if, for example, German retailers are not really interested in, in, in working with you? And I think it ties in to the quality requirements as well, because I heard Jan say in his presentation that one of the reasons that the Kenyan exporters are not uh, preferred at this moment has to do with quality. So a general question for the entire panel, how do you enter the European market? Can I start with um, Alexander? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, actually, we need to say that uh, Kenya is uh, already entered the European market. We can, uh, Kenya is already exporting uh, macadamia uh, and it is the third largest uh, supplier of Europe after South Africa okay. and Australia. So it, uh, it already supplies around 1.5, let's say, thousand tons. Uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, one of the problems could be the quality uh, of, of the nuts. Uh, and um, uh, I guess the processing industry needs to work uh, more with the farmers in order to uh, ensure uh, the, uh, the stable uh, quality demands of the European retailers. And uh, in this moment, we can see uh, that uh, some of the opportunities can lie uh, also in the organic segments, uh, but uh, uh, the quality, I, I, I mean, I, I, uh, maybe the Jens and Alex can correct me, but uh, at the moment, the quality of organic macadamia nuts may be of the lower grade compared to the quality of the macadamia nuts uh, uh, sold in the mainstream market. So this is the one of the uh, in interesting issue just to mention that although the organic can offer you higher prices uh, it does not always correspond to, to what the industry called the quality compiling with the grades and standards uh, required by the industry so this is where the, uh, Kenya can work more but maybe Alex can uh, tell much more because he's producing macadamias also in Kenya too I would say and Jens also is a supplier of the direct direct supplier to the market in Europe okay thank you Alex um, well, look, I think the, 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 the challenge Kenya has is that it, it's generally smallholder growers that are make up the, the most of the volume in Kenya. So 
you have a large, huge amount of uh, growers and farms, and they uh, that creates consistency problems because some one grower might do a good job and the next one not such a good job, but the the products are obviously all processed together and exported together. So you might find uh, varying quality in a in a particular container, etc. Um, so I think that that is the the issue there. I think the other one is. Um, the, the farmers are inclined to harvest a bit early, so you have a lot of immaturity uh, challenges. Um, and that's just usually because um, smallholder farmers want to get cash in their pocket. Um, so they're inclined to harvest a bit too early, and then the, the, the nuts themselves are not mature enough. So um, but that's the, the main challenge. I think organically that, that offers a massive opportunity to Kenya. Um, but I would say that they are sort of organic by default because the smallholder farmers don't apply chemicals because they don't always have the um, they don't always have the equipment they need to apply uh, pesticides and things like that. So they're sort of organic by default, um, but that does op offer a huge opportunity to Kenya. I think. Um, I mean, as we know, the the demand for organic products is is growing, but I think consumers are not always going to be put up with a substandard product. They want a really good quality product, and they want it to be organic. So. It's not yeah, always that clearly, easy. So clearly, there's a, there's there's a lot of work to be done. And when you say organic offers opportunity for Kenya, opportunities for Kenya, I'm sure it's not limited to Kenya. It's, uh, it's organic. Clearly, is a growing market in the EU and offers opportunities to exporters from uh, from all the countries that uh, from all the developing countries clearly. But I think that what it clearly underlines is that Mariah, your program is starting at the perfect time because uh, collaboration and uh, quality control are definitely some of the key issues that need to be addressed, particularly in your program, which is going to be, I think it's going to be focused on Kenya. Is that correct? Yes, it's going to focus on Kenya and it will be a two-step approach. So we will first focus on uh, cooperation within the sector in Kenya, and then we will move to um, promoting uh, the products and processed products and, and hopefully also some of the of the, the products that were mentioned by Jens and Alex and Alexander like oil or um, and milk um, I think there's a there's a lot of opportunity to uh, to put Kenya uh, back where it should be on the European market and to give them a hand so I'm very okay. confident Thank you for that. Um, no, was, and that's the great. Um, one thing I would like to say, there's also a lot of good quality producers in Kenya. So, um, you know, I think the buyers could just choose perhaps who they work with, but, but people, there are a lot of good uh, quality exporters in Kenya. So I don't want to come across as though I'm bad mouthing the industry at all. It's just, um, unfortunately, sometimes a few bad or bad bit of bad quality um, from one or two exporters might uh, you know Cause run the reputation for the for the larger group of exporters um and can i just uh, just illustrate with the with the numbers actually that uh, what alex said that uh, for example at the moment we have according to some estimations uh, more than 100,000 uh, uh, producers of macadamias and uh, for example in australia we have around 800 so we have like 100 more producers in Kenya, which is really difficult to have the full control of the uh, complete uh, supply chain. So I think the CBI project just time uh, came in place. Uh, Kelly Mariah, right. we are all waiting for you to start. Um, you mentioned something about, uh, and, and this is from the Kenyan program, but I'd like to, uh, to expand it to all developing countries. Um, Marae said something about uh, uh, bringing different types of products on the market. So the oil, for example, and we've heard Yen say something about roast nuts. And there's been, there's, we have had a number of questions come in about specific products. So for example, I have a question here that says, that in the US, macadamia milk serves as an alternative to cow milk. Um, is this available in the EU? Is there a market for it? And what processing steps do you have to go through to, to actually make it? And we've had a question also about, for example, whether or not there's a market for bulk pressed macadamia oil. Maybe I could invite our panel, I'd like to start with Jens, Maybe I could invite our panel to say something about the specific value-added products, maybe, that we have for macadamia on the market. Mr. Borchardt? 
Yeah, well, the oil is certainly something to look at, uh, I believe. As I mentioned earlier, the supply is, has been the challenge in the past. Uh, it's probably a good item. And uh, when once you can convince one of the, let's say, supermarkets or retailers, or one of the oil companies, actually, uh, to put it on the shelf, sure. I mean, uh, a, few, a little bit of uh, promotion, and the consumers will certainly buy it, I'm sure. <clears throat> And with regards to the milk, um, uh, there's a domination of, uh, let's say, soy or um, what is it, uh, grain, uh, cashews, uh, Alpro, which is a leader here in this business, they are in the non-organic production. Uh, they cover a lot. They also have an almond milk already. Um, they have not considered macadamia as yet, as far as we know. The only macadamia milk you can see is organic uh, from some smaller uh, companies. Uh, the challenge is that you have to have a very fine product. So you have to grind it extremely fine. Actually, we're working on such a thing right now. Uh, and then you need to find someone who will distribute uh, because the distribution here is the key. And uh, that's the next challenge actually we're faced with. We just can't go low, go to a supermarket as a macadamia producer and say, hey, we have a macadamia milk. Um, they always expect a wide range of products. They want their private label, etc. You have to have a cool chain and so on. Uh, however, we believe that macadamias are a very good replacement. Uh, if you, for example, want a, a product which is, uh, uh, let's say, a replacement for cream. It works very well uh, to make, let's say, a whip for your coffee or whatever. Uh, and uh, at the end, it's not that expensive. So we're looking into this since a couple of years, actually. Uh, but the distribution would be the difficult. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. And, and Alex, from a, from a market research point of view, what could you be able to add? To, um, sorry, I'm actually referring to Alexander. Uh, what could you be able to add to this? Uh, yeah, um, uh, not so much actually just to be aware that uh, uh, supply chain uh, for the milk uh, i mean plant based milk uh, like macadamia uh, milk is the same like uh, uh, very similar actually and the only uh, change uh, i mean uh, we do not at least uh, uh, from my perspective i do not expect that producers would uh, be able to ex export a milk as a final product. They will still be exported macadamias, and they need to be aware that uh, in the final product, one liter of milk contains like two percent of macadamias inside. And the full mm -hmm. process is that uh, uh, imported nuts are cleaned, sorted, after that roasted and blended. After that, there is pre-grinding, uh, milling, and filtering, and after that filling. So this is the uh, how the product is made in the end. Uh, but uh, from the supplier uh, uh, perspective they still need to produce the simple macadamia nuts uh, and the uh, importer would place this product uh, uh, and the, the only uh, uh, maybe the uh, chance could be that we can if this product is going to develop we can see more players in the market so instead of the importers of the nuts we can see big uh, juice processors like for example dollar like biggest uh, european uh, ingredient company or some others they can also uh, enter the market as direct importers this is what okay. i see but market is very small for uh, okay. for the milk at the moment okay thank you for that and uh alex as uh, from from a producer's point of view how do you how are you working to expand your market we've heard that's a very small market we've heard that there's quite a bit of potential can you tell us a bit about how you're breaking that market open and maybe expanding it? Um, well, I think, um, uh, you know, we've, we focus a little bit on, uh, you know, you talk about value add and everyone thinks immediately that means uh, making a milk or making a cheese or making, um, we, we've sort of also see value add as just providing a, a really, really high quality product. Uh, which in itself has more value than than just a normal um, product. So we've we've invested in uh, steam pasteurization um, in South Africa and in Australia. So that's providing a, a food safe product that's 100% food safe, um, validated, and and that that actually 
gives your product a, a lot more value to a potential customer. So um, there's also things like uh, some people do dicing of the product. Um, so you, you, you're offering a product with very tight specifications on size. Um, there's value in ensuring that you have very low shell counts in your product. So you've got one piece of shell per, per ton or whatever it may be. So it's not it's 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 giving the, the customer exactly what they want, and I think if you can do that, then um, and ensure that they 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 therefore their their processes are are quite um, immaculate, and there's no no nothing that goes wrong when they put your macadamias in their product, then the market will organically just grow hopefully. So that's what we we hope anyway, and and that's what we're banking on. Um, so just to make sure that you put the best quality product in the marketplace. Yeah, so what I'm hearing you saying is that uh, as producers, you need to focus on establishing a really strong foundation where the quality of the nuts is actually top notch. And from there, the market is going to start uh, developing organically and create more opportunities for exporters as well. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Consumers, and, uh, consumers, what... I'm sorry, sorry, consumers get a good experience. The consumer will get a good experience and they will come back to buy more as well. So. Okay, thank you. And a general question for the panel. What opportunities are there for fair trade macadamias? Does it already exist? I think, um, it's only, um, what I understand is that only smallholder growers can be fair trade accredited. So it's something that's probably more um, stronger from Kenya or Malawi. Um, as opposed to, I know South Africa, you, you cannot really be fair trade accredited uh, as a commercial grower. Um, but uh, in terms of demand, there was a, a stage when demand was quite strong for fair trade, but it seems to have died down over the last few years. Um, maybe Jens has, knows more about that. Jens? Yeah, well, it's a good question. Uh, I think it was macadamia. The challenge had been the supply. It's in my opinion, um, reliable supply. Um, chocolates or cocoa products, uh, cashews, uh, hazelnuts, uh, we are all facing these issues right now uh, with regards to fair trade and it all has to do, it all comes together with uh, ethical things, uh, social compliance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is more and more a requirement by the supermarkets. Uh, and uh, to be honest, this is why we have been concentrating on certain origins in particular, because we we, we knew that the, these origins were a bit safer, let's say, for these requirements and other origins as well. So. Uh, you can have a certificate, but you don't know whether the certificate is really uh, a true one or it would, uh, uh, let's say, fall apart once there's another audit or something going on, which is uh, quite a real risk actually for us. So uh, even without, let's say, say talking about rainforest alliance or these uh, these things or fair trade, um, we already have these issues with the retailers and we have to comply with all these requirements, uh, more or less. So, in my opinion, I'm not really in a fair trade, in the fair trade business. Uh, neither do we do any organic yet. But uh, as far as I've seen in the market, uh, I think it's just a matter of supply. <clears throat> okay, and uh, hopefully Murray is going to be able to make uh, a big dent uh, in that problem in the coming years. How yeah, I, 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 I can. I would like just to add that yeah. for example, the Fair Trade Foundation is actually quite interested uh, in uh, in uh, promoting uh, fair trade macadamia nuts, and they defined uh, uh, how to say premium prices for each of the ten different grades. So they are very interesting, but it's very difficult to find at the moment in the market. In the UK, there are some products. Uh, I, I came across to some uh, breakfast cereal uh, with fair trade macadamias inside but uh, the, the share is very small at the moment, so it can be promoted, I think. Okay, thank you for that. Um, broadening the scope a little bit, how would you say that macadamia nuts compare to other nuts in terms of um, market potential, in terms of consumer preference? Um, Jens, maybe? Uh, that's a good question. Um... 
the European, let's say, eating habits are uh, quite different from one country to the other. Um, I, I would say, and you can even see that at the statistics for macadamia right now, like a market like it Italy, for example, is completely underdeveloped. Um, we don't know why. We've tried to develop that and trying to make contacts. Um, we don't know really. They prefer maybe not local products, hazelnuts and, and uh, walnuts, maybe, etc. Uh, Germany is has been historically a big market for the macadamias uh, that was introduced by Aldi uh, some years ago. The same was pistachios, and that consumption is quite large. And we also have a lot of ethnic people here, so they know how good nuts are, basically. Uh, <clears throat> Spain. Uh, the, the trading of nuts in Spain is a, still a bit different. They sell a lot in local markets. You have some, let's say, wholesalers there uh, and so on, which is quite uh, different to Germany, where almost everything is sold in a discount store. Uh, Holland, uh, they have quite a lot of uh, nut bars, actually. Nuts and dried fruits are quite popular, so you can uh, find them everywhere on the markets and supermarkets, etc. Uh, so. You have to look at the different uh, diets or eating habits as well, I suppose. It's just, you can't just say it's globally the same everywhere. Mm, okay. And this is really an interesting discussion, but uh, looking at the time, we've, we've already exceeded our time by almost, uh, by over 20 minutes, actually. So I'd, I'd like to start moving towards a conclusion. I think we've tackled most of the questions. There are about two, there are two questions that I'd like, really like to address, and they have to do with quality requirements, and they have to, the second question has to do with uh, that question I promised Alex I'd get back to. Um, how do you deal with pests and fungi, for example, in your production given the EU requirements? Maybe I could start with Alexander first. Alexander, could you, is it possible to give a quick summary of the key requirements, quality requirements and other requirements that producers need to be able to meet before they enter, in order to enter the EU market? Yeah, of course, but also I, I would like to invite our uh, uh, participants to read more about requirements on the CBI website because there is the whole bio requirement study. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a detailed one, and there is uh, you can they can also uh, find uh, some details in the specific macadamia nut study. So in general, uh, I'm sorry for talking fast, but I need to. It's a big topic, but we can uh, tell mo mostly that food safety is still the num requirement number one. Uh, so the basic is uh, the quite the same with the other nuts. Uh, so the control of the contaminants on the first uh, place, pesticide residues is very important. Uh, as you see that many of them are changing and limits are decreasing. For example, the one of the uh, used in production is chlorophyllos, which is decreased in the last year. Uh, mycotoxin is not, are also need to be controlled, but they are not big uh, issue. Uh, also, uh, we, they need, the producers need to, to take care of both post harvesting procedures uh, in order to avoid the, the contamination with the uh, Salmonella and uh, with Escherichia coli, which are the, I would say, the one of the most uh, topics. But uh, aside from the food state, we have the specific quality requirements, and they need to follow at least uh, a classification uh, by the United N uh, Nations European Commission, uh, uh, which is called UNECE, which are dividing the macadamia nuts in different classes and grades. Uh, they need to be sure that they have the specific processing machines in place. Uh, so they need the real, uh, if they said it is grade one, it ne really needs to be grade one, uh, etc. style one, style two, etc. So this is the very uh, basic and they would need really to, uh, to uh, invest into the food safety certifications. Uh, like IFC or BRS, BRC, uh, IFS, BRC or FSCC 22,000 or some of the, uh, they need also to check with the buyers uh, uh, which of, the, of those certifications preferred. As yes, already said, if they are dealing with a 
UK importers, they would need to be certified BRC mainly, but if they want to deal with German retailers, they would be asked to get certified by IFS. This is very mm -hmm. short summary. We can talk much more about that, but it's better yeah. to... The information is also in the buyer requirements document on the CBI yeah. website, and uh, Arthur will be telling us about uh, that in the closing comments of the webinar. Very quickly moving to Alex White, uh, food safety requirements, key. There was a question earlier and during the first Q&A session that we had about uh, fungi, about dealing with pests. All those have a very potential, huge impact on food safety. How do you handle that in production? Um, well, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if they were talking about aflatoxin itself, um, which isn't such a big problem with Max. But um, in terms of pests, well, um, that's Disney generally controlled uh, with good agricultural practice, so using integrated pest management, trying to farm with nature where possible, but um, also with, it does, macadamias generally do, um, a lot of farms do apply pesticides uh, to control stink bug, which is a coconut bug, uh, which does a lot of damage to the, the nuts on the trees. Um, there's obviously, you have to take residues, testing from each grower, that delivers and you'd make sure that uh, they haven't applied chemicals that they shouldn't apply and also they're within the EU limits is very key uh, because if your product is caught on a shelf in a supermarket that is over the EU limits then uh, you're gonna, there's going to be financial um, problems for your importer or your packer or, or maybe even yourself so uh, that's very key. Um, the other big one is food safety so that's generally salmonella with macadamias it's something that comes in on the orchard we have uh, in Africa, we have a lot of wild animals in the orchard, monkeys, bush pigs, um, snakes, whatever it might be. And the, the shell of the nut can come into contact with, um, you know, uh, the droppings of these, these animals and, and then it does get on the kernel. So it's something that in your factories, you need to have systems in place to make to control that and testing regimes to test for it to make sure that you're not selling product that is potentially unsafe for human consumption. Um, so yeah, those are the, the really quick ones. And I, I think if you follow um, HACCP or ISO or FSSC protocols, they, they do, um, you know, they should be taking that into account in your production process. Okay, thank you. Jens, uh, any final comments on this? Well, all of this, what Alex and uh, Alexander have just explained, uh, it's quite important. Uh, we also have to provide 12 months shelf life and uh, macadamias are very good nut, very high quality fat but uh, they also deteriorate if you are not doing a good job at the beginning so that's that's key actually and uh, we've made the experience a couple of years ago that then all of a sudden you end up with a recall which is not much fun. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely not, no. Maria, listening to all this, I think you have a lot of input to integrate into your program next year, correct? Yes, we definitely do have, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, that we have a lot of uh, Kenyan listeners, because uh, in the end, it's, um, it's, it's the, the news is for them, and they uh, have to um, uh, roll up the sleeves and, um, and put it to work. Uh, CBI is going to support in any way, and um, I'm very much looking forward to start the project. Thanks. I think with you, a lot of people are. Um, we're. I'm trying to keep this. Uh, well, clearly, I've, I've really over over overstepped the the time limits, but I'm trying to move this to a conclusion. So I would like to thank our panelists for being part of the second Q and A discussion, and I see that the sun has come out here which is uh, distorting my screen a bit. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all, our panelists, for joining in this discussion. Uh, Jens, thank you for joining us from Hamburg. Uh, Alex from uh, Johannesburg. Maria, I'm not quite sure where you are. The Hague, maybe? The Hague, uh, yes. The Hague, indeed. And Alexander from Valjevo in uh, Serbia, thank you for uh, being a part of this webinar. And thank you so much for being a part of this Q&A session. And I would now like to move on to uh let's see i'd like to invite arta actually to come up and just summarize where this information that we've heard can be found and how to find the information arta welcome yes antonia thank you and uh, also first of all uh, thanks to our panelists um, very inspiring and good uh, presentations today 
Um, so yeah, let me, I'm looking at the time, I try to do this in a minute so we can all go off to lunch at one o'clock. Um, let me quickly share uh, my, uh, my screen with you. Arthur, your video is off. Okay, you're back. Yeah, if you can make me presenter. Yes, um, I will. So, if all went well, you can see the CBI website right now. Um, so, um, many of the information, we've had many references uh, uh, today to our market information. Study written by Alexander in collaboration with importers, um, like uh, the person you saw today in the webinar, uh, together with experts, together with uh, industry stakeholders. Uh, to see that study, you go to market information, and then you search your sector, which is processed fruit and vegetable and edible nuts. And this is the homepage. Um, there's a lot of interesting information for you to check out. On the left-hand side, we have sector information, which is about the whole processed fruit and vegetables and edible nuts sector. We have the general industry trends. We have industry news. Um, also, I suggest you can also do that after this webinar with the survey to subscribe to the newsletter, uh, which will give you the opportunity uh, to get alerts whenever a new study comes online. But most interesting for you will probably be the promising export products. You see, we have a lot of them. So it can be, uh, if you're a producer of more uh, processed products, uh, sometimes you see combinations of dried mango and uh, macadamia nuts, or cashew nuts and macadamia nuts. We have studies on all of those, but just to focus on uh, the macadamia study, here we go. Uh, we split out the topics into two. So we have the market potential, which focuses on what we've seen today as well, what are the biggest markets? Why is Europe an interesting market? And also, uh, what are the trends uh, you should uh, uh, focus on? And we have another study, which is the market entry. Let me open that one for you. Uh, the way these studies work is that if you want to quickly scroll to a certain part that interests you, you can use the table of contents. For example, here we were talking, Alexander was talking about the requirements. Here you see the requirements. What are the requirements for macadamia? You see it's being split out to also to quality requirements, food safety, corporate social responsibility. All of those are covered. Um, if after this presentation and after today you still have any questions, you can always ask your question to CBI using the ask your question button. Um, and that's about it, what I wanted to say. Um, I would like to thank you all uh, very much for, uh, for joining us today. And um, from my side and from CBI, um, wish you all a very good uh, continuation of your day. Thank you. Thank you for that, Arta. And uh, that brings us to the conclusion of uh, today's webinar. Uh, just as a reminder, we are going to be sending out an email with all the presentations, with a recording of the webinar, so you are not going to miss anything, and you will receive a link to the market study that Arta just showed you on the CBI website. Um, just to repeat, today's webinar was based on the market study exporting macadamia nuts to Europe. Um, I've already thanked our panelists and I will do so again. Thank you very much for being a part of this webinar. Thank you, uh, the team at CBI, both Arthur and uh, Maraya, as well as uh, Vivian and Marfit, who were at the back end answering technical questions and making sure that uh, the webinar went as smoothly as possible. And um, I want to thank you for sticking with us because we've gone way beyond uh, the scheduled end time. And I see that the majority of you are still uh, in the webinar. So thank you very much for hanging in there. I hope that this webinar was, uh, was filled with, uh, with, with good information for you, useful information for you. And I wish you the best of luck and uh, all the success for, uh, for your business opportunities in exporting to Europe. Um, I think that's uh, just about all we have time for today. So I am going to sign off now again with a thank you and well wishes for a wonderful day. See you at a future CBI webinar. Goodbye.